Peter Chang here from Macho Cave TV and welcome to part five of our RC car painting guide and first things first is when you start painting I highly suggest putting on your respirator or spray mask and in a sense even though you're using what on the label might say like non-tostic or uh, environmentally safe or water-based uh, paints and solvents and primers and and liquid masks and what have you uh, I always recommend just uh, putting on the respirator uh, just because uh, it's it, it keeps like these paint particles from entering your nose and lungs and um, you you could breathe better throughout the rest of the day when you're not painting uh, your health is the most important thing and uh, no matter how rich or poor you are you can't buy more health so I highly suggest uh, getting getting uh, healthy with that um, and using that as a best practice also uh, as a side note when you're painting uh, you should also paint in the ventilated area I'm actually in my garage with the garage door open and also you notice that uh, I have a, a fume extractor and you know it's not quite a spray booth but it is it is you know sucking in some additional overspray into the uh, fume extractor so however however you could manage that uh, go ahead and give that a try um, I'm gonna be spraying the Bob Dively liquid mask and what's interesting about Bob Dively's liquid mask is that the instructions actually suggest uh, spraying it versus uh, painting it on and what I've done is I've essentially just poured the entire contents of a four ounce bottle into my uh, Iwata Big Mouth uh, bottom feed paint bottle and and the airbrush I'm using is the Iwata BCS Eclipse or, or the Eclipse uh, BCS now what's great about so great about the Iwata uh, BCS Eclipse is that it it has this awesome uh, larger needle size it's a uh, 0.5 millimeters um, it's it's also a double action airbrush so that uh, when I spray the if I pull back on the trigger it's going to spray more of the of the liquid mask and as I pull back further it it's it it's gonna also uh, give me more air and more paint if I push down and pull back on the trigger now you notice that when I'm spraying the the uh, liquid mask on here uh, we could see the regions where I'm spraying because it's uh, it's turning like kind of like uh, not not quite white but uh, kind of like milky milky or cream colored white. Uh, it's not exactly transparent; it's starting to look a little opaque. But as it dries out, it's gonna dry transparent. And I'm just putting in like these uh, thin layers, thin coats, and I'm just going back and I'm just uh, repainting. And you notice that as it's drying, it becomes more transparent as it starts to dry out. And so what do you do then? Um, how do you paint this? So essentially, uh, I'm just taking my time and just going left to right, um, making sure I'm not over spraying areas and I'm also making sure that I'm not under spraying. And also I'm just trying to keep the coating uh, just trying to keep the coating so it's it's a uh, nice and light so I don't uh, I don't overspray or spray too much in one area and, and just be too dominant in one area um, what you'd also notice is that I don't have my design planned out just yet uh, and it's just this is just because I'm still thinking about uh, what kind of design to use and what kind of design element to to paint on necessarily so essentially you just take your time uh, you don't have to have everything hundred percent planned out uh, when you're starting it out um, but just so you know uh, uh, Bob Dively isn't the only liquid mask that you can purchase uh, Pactra also makes a liquid mask as well um, I'm just a fan of the Bob Dively stuff because uh, it it sprays on very easily um, although if you check the uh, various RC forums, 
Uh, a lot of people don't spray the uh, Bob Dive Lee Mask Day. Instead, they, they paint it on or they brush it on. So I'm kind of a stickler for just following the rules and, and uh, following the instructions to the letter. So it's uh, kind of interesting that, that uh, other, other guys, uh, you know, paint it on. Uh, there is no right or wrong way necessarily. It's just uh, it just seems like if if someone's not doing something your way, it just seems horribly wrong. But in this case, it's just uh, there is no right or wrong. So if you say if you didn't have an airbrush yet for the step, feel free to paint it on. But just realize best practice is just to use the airbrush. Um, next thing, next question is like you know like usually like when I'm airbrushing, people often ask. Uh, what is the the uh, PSI level? So, uh, in a sense, uh, I'm I'm using one bar PSI level, which is uh, one bar. Uh, depending on who you ask, one bar might be 15 PSI to 30 PSI. Uh, I'm right right about in the middle right now. I'm using 20 to 25 PSI uh, with the uh, 0.5 millimeter nozzle or needle. I'm not uh, it's not really clogging at all, so I'm just I'm just doing it this uh, very relatively briskly, and everything is is uh, going great. So I'm just basically moving uh, coverage area from left to right, left to right, and just applying like an even even uh, m uh, amount of liquid mask. Now, what's kind of difficult with with Bob Dively liquid mask as you're spraying it on? is that when it starts to dry it dries it you know it becomes a clear as it dries and so as you're as you're painting and it's and it's becoming drying it's it's uh it's kind of difficult to gauge of how much of the of the uh, liquid mask you actually are applying so some areas uh if you're just starting out some areas might might be a little too thick and other areas might be a little too thin and what you have to just kind of mentally keep track of is is uh, if you finished an area so uh, for this reason this is the reason why I like to like to think in terms of painting left to right left to right uh, up and down and then left to right so I generally like to finish like an area so uh, for example like like uh, I, I generally like to paint uh, everything on the left panel and then and then uh, go to the right panel and make sure that everything is painted in the right panel. Uh, then I go in the uh, center. Um, or another way is you could think of it as you could work from left panel, do everything on the left panel, uh, and then do everything in the middle section, and then finish everything in the right panel. Here we see it's about 15 minutes into this painting, and or 30 minutes into this painting. And we see various regions drying at different rates. Uh, some areas have too much uh, liquid mask and other areas don't have enough liquid mask. But you get the idea that when it's, as it's drying, it, it's becoming more transparent or translucent. So you start to see areas where the liquid mask is thicker and that is uh, kind of like the whiter areas and then the areas that that it has been applied and dried out we see this kind of cloudy translucent layer on there so and it looks like it's it's just that everything is just kind of more blurred or or blobby in there as you as it's drying out and that's perfectly normal because it, it has to be transparent when you're when you're uh, creating your designs and and uh, as you're cutting out the liquid mask or, or the dried liquid mask I should say so you know like what areas to to pull out uh, and what areas to to uh, to leave completed. So not exactly uh, easy or or difficult, but um, it, it it does require just like a little discipline to make sure that hey you know like I'm really painting this area or I'm actually giving this area enough uh, of the masking material. Um, generally. I, if you're gonna error, I would say error on overpainting the liquid mask. Like have thicker regions of liquid mask. Uh, and why I would suggest you to use a a thicker mask is is that 
when as you're cutting out intricate shapes, if it's if it's thicker, um, it it doesn't uh, the the edging doesn't break and it's also easier to peel off. If you spray something that's too thin, as you start cutting out uh, regions of your mask, what happens is that uh, everything tends to peel and and wreck apart. So, it, as a general guideline, I would suggest. Um, just going back in there and and just uh, painting it uh, all out just a little thicker um, also to note in this step is that as you're painting in the liquid mask um, keep a, keep aware and keep in mind that your fingerprints might be uh, somewhere on on the on the back side so and, and then this this occurs just naturally because um, as you're painting you, you tend to grip parts of the underside of the Lexan body and 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 as a result you might uh, airbrush in your your fingerprint on the backside um, it you know and it's not the end of the world with with a liquid mask because uh, once you cut off the mask you could you could double check and then uh, you know grab a maybe like a microfiber cloth and and uh, you know uh, kind of brush away your fingerprints but you know, if you're if if you're painting with like say flat colors or or metallic colors, uh, your fingerprint will show up and and, and kind of stick out like a sore thumb, and and uh, you know make things not look so great. But just so you know, like so as you see here, I'm I'm just applying more to liquid mask, just uh, getting some more of it on, um, and because this liquid mask hasn't 100% dried. It looks like I'm painting the uh, RC car body this strange uh, whitish color, and it's uh, it's not you know it's not going to dry this color. It's going to dry uh, translucent or transparent. So here we see uh, some of the areas on the front hood where where uh, um, you know I may have applied too much of the Bob Divey liquid mask, and and we see that it's. Uh, it, it is it is uh, kind of drying at a at a different rate. All right, so I'm all done with applying the liquid mask, and I'm just going to empty out this this I uh, want a big mouth bottle, and I still have a lot of the uh, liquid mask left. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just pour it back. Uh, generally, with a four ounce bottle, you would have enough uh, liquid mask material to last you uh, I would say at most two one-tenth scale RC cars and it, it's generally just a rule of thumb um, if you're painting like a smaller scale like maybe one-eighth or micro um, or I'm sorry one-twelfth or micro or one-sixteenth um, you might have uh, enough to paint like four four uh, uh, you know RC cars using this liquid mask so but generally my my mileage seems to be just uh, one or two RC cars uh, next thing I'm using is I'm using the Iwata airbrush cleaner and I'm using this to break down the Bob Dively liquid mask uh, in my uh, in my uh, bottom feed bottle uh, some people don't like bottom feed bottles because you have to go back and you have to clean out the uh, bottom feed bottles but I find that it's not it's not that hard to clean out um, and and just the capacity of having uh, extra paint really makes it worth it worthwhile. Uh, the hardest part is perhaps just cleaning out the uh, the siphon straw, and you know like your gut reaction is to blow into it, but don't blow into it. Um, take your time. Uh, use some air pressure to blow it out, and uh, use some airbrush cleaner to uh, to have that cleaned out. So um, another idea is if you have a, a ultrasonic cleaner you could actually uh, take that siphon tube and and uh, put it in the ultrasound cleaner uh, and that that should clean out the the tube as well too so I've loaded it with the airbrush cleaner and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Iwata cleaning station and I'm just going to go ahead and spray in here and and I have spray out the rest of the uh, the liquid mask into this container thanks for watching and remember, everything matters, and stay tuned for part 6 of our airbrushing.